Hello, welcome back to Code Station 33. Today we're going to talk about how to create a data structure that allows you to hold information um, in a more efficient manner when you have multiple pieces of information of the same kind. So, for example, suppose you had a shopping list and you wanted to keep track of all the things that you were going to the store to buy. Well, you could create a variable name for each thing in the shopping list. You could say uh, shopping list one item, shopping list two item, shopping list three item. And the problem with that is you would have to know how many items exactly you are going to let the user use. And you have to set up those variables and have them all ready to go for when you're writing the program. But suppose you wanted to create a way for the user to pick the number of variables that they would need to use and to decide how many items in their shopping list they would have. At that point, you'd have to create something that at runtime, the size of that thing could be created and you would have exactly the number of variables that you needed to accomplish that task, but it wouldn't be created until the program was actually running. The structure we use to do that in coding is called an array. So what we're going to do today is take a look at how arrays are built and how they're structured, and then we're going to go and look at a little project where we take some LED set up as an array and make them turn on and off in sequence. So let's dive in. So I have this little project. I'm going to just throw an Arduino board on here for now. And we're just going to look at code for right now. I'm going to switch this to text because you can't do this with the blocks. It has to be done with just the text. I'm going to get rid of everything that's in there. Probably should have done that before, but we'll just get rid of it now. OK. So if we wanted to set up an array in Arduino, we have to first tell the computer how many items are going to be in the array. We have to set that information up. So we could get that number from the user or we could get that number ourselves and just type it in. So for now, we're just going to start by getting the number ourselves and typing it in. And we're going to leave the user out of it for right now. So suppose I wanted to set up an array. And let me zoom in here a little bit. go and I want it to be an array of numbers so we're going to call them ints what I would do is declare the type then I have to come up with a name for my array so I'm just going to call it my list now right now it's declared as an integer as a single number the thing that makes it an array are these brackets and inside the brackets I'm going to put a number that tells the computer that I want an array that has four items in it. Those items are indexed 0, 1, 2, 3. If I wanted to go ahead and fill values in that array, I could directly say my list 0 equals 4 my list 1 equals 5 and so forth I forget my semicolons and just go all the way through the list all the way down to index 3 so you might be a little confused at this point and say wait a minute three items why aren't we doing four items well we actually are doing four items if you count we have index zero one two and three that is four items i think i have this on overtype here we'll fix that the length of the array is always going to count the number of items in the list.
but the position in the array always starts at zero. So the position of the last item will always be one number less than the length. So that's one way of setting up a list. Another way is letting the computer count for you. So in this list, what I would do is give it a set of numbers. 2, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And in this case, the computer would go ahead and count for me all of the items in the list. And it would say there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 items. So it would be indexed 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I wanted to get to a particular value of that list, I would just address it. My list 2, item number 4. And let's say I wanted to print it out. I could do uh, a serial dot print line and print out my list. And of course, if I'm using the serial monitor, we all know I have to start it. So I'm going to go up here to my setup, serial.begin. 9600. So now when this first runs, it's going to print out the value that's stored at index 4. Now we got to count this out. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. So it's going to print out the number 7 when we go ahead and run this. Now, a little different in um, Arduino that doesn't exist in many other languages is you can kind of do a combination of both. You could say int my list three, and we could say how big the list is going to be, and then put the numbers in. Now, I'm not quite sure how that would be all that helpful. I would rather just let the computer do it m themselves, because you kind of run into issues if you make a list bigger than you declare. So we definitely don't really want to make a list bigger than we're going to declare. So it's unnecessary to do both. You could also make arrays of other types of things. My word, which is an array of characters. So if we put that array of characters together, the way I would do that is use quotes. And again, Java, not Java, excuse me, Arduino would count the number of characters in there and make it the right size. It's actually going to be one more than the number of characters when you put it in a series of characters here because there's a character that tells the computer that we're at the end of the string. So there's actually an extra character in there if we were to print out the length. Sometimes we call this a string because it's a string of characters strung together into an array. So we could go ahead and print out a particular character of our word and say serial.println my word. And let's say we wanted the letter that was at index 4 and print that out to the screen. So we're going to just run this just to see what we got. We should get a 7. And we should also get the letter R which is indexed 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. If we start counting at 0, it's the fourth index, which is actually the fifth letter. So we have a basics of our arrays. It is a pain in the neck to have to constantly go through and address each of these individually. Fortunately for us, we have another way of doing this using a different structure. Let me stop my simulation. Using something called a for loop. And we've looked at this before. So we start with the word for. We pick a variable to initialize. And we're going to go through and count out, starting at 0. i has to be less than the length of the array. Now, there's two ways of getting it. We could get it because we know the length of the array, but we could also directly address the length of the array. The method we use to figure out the size of the array is size 
of. So in here, where i is less than size of, then I would put the name of my array. So in this case, let's do my list 3. And then I'm going to increment i by one value each time. So I have my little for loop here. I'm going to open my print, my brackets, my braces, close my braces so that way I have my space in here. Now, if I want to address each element in my list three, let's say I want to do a print line, I'm going to say the name of my array, which is my list three. The index I want is the current index I'm on, which is going to be the variable i, because that's going to go zero through the length of my list, actually one less than, because it's i less than. And it's going to print that out for me. So let's go ahead and run that. And look at our thing. So now we can see, oh my gosh, what do those numbers mean? OK, so those numbers are the actual size of the values that are stored in that array. So when I look at my list 3, we have 3, 4, 5, 7. And it's printing out my list, but it's printing out the character addresses for each of those. Remember we've talked about that, that you can't, um, we have to be careful of the addressing and make sure we're printing out the actual character rather than the ASCII character code for that number. So we're going to go ahead and try to modify this and do that again. So what we actually have to do here is we have to tell the computer how big each item is in the list when we're using this size of. So it's Pretty straightforward. The size of my list, 3, divided by the size of an int. When you do that, and this time when we run it, we'll see that we're going to get our 3, 4, 5, 7 printed out. So let's go ahead and do that. And you can see there it is, our 7 RR, and then our 3, 4, 5, 7 that we expected. We can run it one more time just to make sure. Stop, start, and there we go. So it is a little bit more complicated to get the length of an array when you don't know it explicitly, but it can be done. So you can either just put in the number. So in this case, if we knew it has a length of 4, we could just put that in and use the 4 here. Like that. And it would work. Or we have to take the size of our particular array and divide it by the size of an array of ints, and that will correctly tell us the last index of our last item in our array. So a little complicated. There are other languages that handle this a lot better, but it just so happens that the Arduino does not handle this very well, and we have to uh, get at that information in that way. There is one more way to go through an array that is a little bit less clunky. What we can do is use the fact that it is what we call an iterable item. And we could say for int, and just give this a variable name, i, colon my list 3. And essentially what we're telling the computer is for each thing in my list, print that item. So now when we do it and run it, and take a look at our code, we can say that we still get the 3, 4, 5, 7 that we expected, but we don't need to know the actual size of the array. So I would say this second bit of code is definitely less clunky. 
it's a lot easier to deal with and it's probably the one we should be using and it's called a for each loop. So now we've gone through and messed around with these arrays a little bit. Let's go ahead and create something in the Arduino and have you go ahead and use that to make a project. So we're going to start out with an Arduino and a breadboard and we are going to add a bunch of LEDs with resistors onto our breadboard. So let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we have put our LEDs on. It is time to connect them up to our board. So I want to connect the uh, cathodes all to the ground. So I'm going to run a ground wire. Let's change this to black. From my ground bar to the ground pin. And then I'm just going to run um, all of these grounded down to uh, the ground bar. So we're going to take oh, my resistors in the wrong spots. Let me slide them all over. I want my resistors all on the anodes, not the cathodes. There we go. So I'm going to run from this ground here straight to the ground bar. We're just going to do this all the way across. And now I'm going to connect each of the anodes of these to the pins on the board. So I want to go 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2. I want to make sure I stay in order. So that way when I do my array, it's just going to go in the order of the pins and it'll make a lot of sense. I just want to stay away from the TX and the RX because sometimes there's extra information on there and it can mess up my signal. So I'm going to go ahead and run all those wires. Okay, so now I have all my wires run into my board and it's now time to dive into the code. So let's take a look. So I'm gonna set up my array and it's gonna have the numbers two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, which are my pins. I'm gonna set up a variable called delay time. Notice the array is set up outside setup so that way it can be used in both setup and loop. So the scope is global. So everybody can use LED array. And the first thing I'm going to do is go through and set all of my pins to output. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this should be actually from zero um, to eight, actually zero to seven. Counting this out, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if we're indexing it directly. Or you could use a for each loop, you could do that as well. Maybe we'll change what we have down here later for a for each loop. And I'm gonna set the pin modes of all of those LEDs to output. Then I'm gonna turn on all of the LEDs with a digital write using the same for loop from zero there we go, less than or equal to seven, from zero to seven. And then we're going to turn them all off from 0 to 7, but we're going to count down. So we're going to start at 7 and go down to 0. Remember, our for loops can go either direction. So we're going to set them to high, and then we're going to set them to low, and we're going to set the delay time between that as 5 times as long, just to slow it down a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and start our simulation and see how that goes. And we can see that the LEDs are now flashing on and off much like you would in, there's an old show called Knight Rider and they used to do that in Knight Rider, so it was pretty awesome. So you can recreate that. So let's take a look at this and switch one of these loops to a for each loop. So let me go ahead and rewrite that. So instead of doing this, we're gonna say for int i, because it's storing a bunch of integers and it's the LED array. We're just going to um, digital write i, which is the number of our pin, comma, low. And we're gonna do the same delay time
time is 5. And it's just a different way of writing the code. Okay, so I'm going to comment out this. And you can see when we run this, it's going to work almost the same, except I'm not counting down. In this one, I'm counting up again. If you wanted to make a count down, you could subtract 7 from it to get it to count down. But this is just another way of going through the array without having to know the exact length of the array that there's seven LEDs. You also notice up here I did less than or equal to seven. I could have also done less than eight. That would have worked too. Instead of doing less than or equal to seven, we could run it and we could see that it's still going to work for us. And there we go. And in fact, if we wanted to, we'll put the one that turns them off and just make this one the, the one that turns them on. And we'll comment out this one so we can see it actually still does work the other direction. So this will turn them on, this will turn them off, but it'll turn them off by counting down. So we'll run that. And now it should work the same functionality it did before, but I think I, it froze for some reason. But so it works the same way it did before, uh, just counting up. Oh, I should have backwards this. They both say low, that's why. There we go. There we go. And you can see now it goes on and off like it did before. So two different ways of doing the loops in order to access the elements of the array using either the for each loop or just using a regular for loop, but you have to know the length of the array and if you don't know the length of the array, you can do some math, like we said, to figure it out. Instead of doing 0, we could do greater than or equal to size of LED array divided by size of an int. And then when we do it, it's going to still work and give us our working loop working exactly the way we expect it to work. Okay? So, entirely up to you how you want to do it. Um, you get to decide. Oh, I put that backwards, didn't I? Sorry, that one should have gone. It should have still been zero because I'm counting down and instead of seven, this is where I want it. So we're starting there. Greater than or equal to zero. So now it'll work. There we go. Okay, so there is our whole project. I know there was a lot, um, a whole lot of different things to take a look at, but I thought it was worth going through a whole different ways of looking at an array. They're really, really useful code structures, and uh, I think you could have a lot of fun using them in order to do a whole bunch of different Arduino projects. That's all for today. I'll see you next time.